Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Since their creation, helicopters have offered great versatility to military operations thanks to their vertical flight. For this reason, countless models have been developed, each focused on fulfilling various tasks, from support activities to attack missions. This drive to create better technologies and more powerful vehicles has brought about iconic helicopters, such as the Mil Mi-26, an aircraft globally known for being one of the world's largest serial production helicopters. Its enormous dimensions are designed to fulfill its role as a heavy lift helicopter, being capable of transporting up to 44,000 pounds, which is still incredible by today's standards. However, carrying out constant operations with this type of load generates fatigue in the helicopter's components. So, maintenance activities must be carried out regularly to ensure that the Mi-26 always works well. These tasks are usually carried out in the hangar maintenance stations, where specialized technicians begin the routine inspection. Such personnel rely on maintenance manuals for each section of the aircraft, which describe each component, its functionality, possible failures, and suggestions for fixing these incidents. For example, the airframe or helicopter system's manuals specify the structure's joining points and include detailed diagrams of components such as engine cooling. During these tasks, mechanics and engineers follow checklists based on manuals, starting with the external components and continuing with the internal areas of the helicopter. On the outside, the fuselage panels made of composite materials are checked for damage. If they are damaged, they are replaced on site. While some technicians check this along the helicopter's 131-foot length, other mechanics stand on top of the aircraft, inspecting its eight-bladed main-lift rotor. Here, they review the rotation mechanisms of the enormous propeller and the D-136 turboshaft engine which offers a power of almost 11,400 horsepower, necessary for the Mi-26's work. Clearly, these inspections of the propulsion system involve checking the other subsystems related to this, including electronics, coolant, and fuel. Another fluid of vital importance for the aircraft involves the nose landing gear retractable system, which is used in case of landing in difficult terrain. Therefore, the hydraulic system must always have the appropriate pressure without showing leaks, 
demonstrating that it is working properly. In addition, the technicians verify that the landing gear structure has no signs of fatigue by reviewing how often the aircraft has been used to know if these components require repair or replacement. At the interior of the aircraft, the technicians focus more on the functionality of the avionics and controls used in the cockpit, especially whether they respond well to commands given by the pilots, or whether the sensors are making a coherent reading of what is happening outside the helicopter. Even so, mechanics also spend considerable time inspecting and maintaining the aircraft's cargo bay, considering its large dimensions. With approximately 3,900 cubic feet of volume, it is here that the helicopter can mobilize transport vehicles, heavy machinery, and up to 90 fully equipped troops. Here, they verify that the gate opening systems work correctly and that there is no wear on the components due to the constant loading and unloading of equipment. Once the maintenance operations are completed in the hangars, this aircraft is ready to begin operations again. For this, the crew begins preparations inside the cockpit, preparing the avionics while they coordinate with the ground support personnel to begin the starting process. During this step, the onboard auxiliary power unit is activated to provide power for the helicopter's systems, including avionics, navigation, and hydraulic systems. After this, the two turboshaft engines are started sequentially while the flight engineers monitor the system parameters. Once they are running and the checks are complete, the crew adjusts the throttle to achieve the necessary power for takeoff and flight. These same systems are used at the time of landing to stabilize and position the aircraft on the heliports. As the collective pitch decreases, the lift is reduced, allowing the MI-26 to settle onto the landing gear. Because this process is a standardized sequence, handling the MI-26 is relatively simple after specialized training. Furthermore, considering the capabilities and achievements obtained with this aircraft, it has allowed other nations, especially those with a historical link with Russia, to have this helicopter within their aerial capabilities. This includes nations like Belarus that have this aircraft within their air force to transport machinery and equipment, but especially to be used by the Ministry of Emergency Situations for disaster response or humanitarian missions.
Although the Mi-26 is renowned for its characteristics, it is not the only helicopter whose design and capabilities have been iconic in the military forces. One of these cases falls on the CH-47 Chinook, an aircraft initially developed by Vertel and currently built by Boeing. Its distinctive tandem rotor design has made it a backbone of the U.S. Army and numerous other forces since its introduction in the early 60s, widely praised for its versatility. With the two rotors mounted on both ends, the Chinook can reach up to 170 knots, operating at a 20,000 feet in altitude while moving maximum loads of 22,000 pounds. Thanks to these features, it is used for transporting troops and equipment, which is why its service has been provided in countless conflicts and operations from Vietnam to missions in Iraq or Afghanistan. Being an aircraft of great importance for the military forces and with a particular design, constant training exercises must be carried out so that pilots know how to take advantage of the versatility of the CH-47. Its dual main rotor setup offers stable handling, even on steep or rugged terrain, making it ideal for difficult battlefield or rescue missions. Because of this, pilots must become accustomed to the rotor system every time the aircraft is used, including pre-flight and takeoff processes. In this case, similar steps to other helicopters must be followed, but the extra rear rotor must be taken into account, which, once mastered, allows the crew to achieve smooth maneuvering. Once pilots are prepared with hours of training, military forces can fully exploit the Chinook's capabilities in personal deployment and extraction operations. The adaptability of its cargo bay allows the aircraft to be used in medical evacuations, installing first aid instruments on board to treat critical members. This versatility also occurs in different climatic conditions, since the Chinook is used in polar climates. On the other hand, its design is optimal for helo casting operations which includes launching troops into the water while the aircraft flies close over the surface. Its wide bay allows troops to launch quickly, increasing the efficiency of these operations. Aircrafts such as the Chinook have demonstrated the importance of transport helicopters in the effectiveness of U.S. Air Force operations. This has encouraged the development of a variety of designs focused on this type of task, such as what happened with the CH-53 Sea Stallion series, which began at similar times to the Chinook in the early 1960s intending to replace Sikorsky's Mojave helicopters. Like other aircraft, the Sea Stallion has had different evolutions over the years, with the CH-53K being one of its most recent, with improvements to its avionics, including a digital flight control system and management system. Besides, its development involved three General Electric T408 turboshaft engines, which can deliver more than 7,300 shaft horsepower each. 
Like other aircraft in its category, the CH-53K must carry out constant maintenance work. These are carried out based on daily aircraft inspections, which are implemented before and after a flight. With this, the ground team determines the systems that require repair or replacement during scheduled maintenance. The CH-53K has a lower maintenance ratio compared to other variants, aiming for around two hours of maintenance per flight hour. Also, manufacturers like Sikorsky and Lockheed Martin provide training and support systems for maintainers and operators, such as a flight training device that simulates a cockpit environment providing maintainers with an experience in troubleshooting and system repairs. With the development of this new version, the CH-53K has demonstrated better flight and cargo handling capabilities than its predecessors. With a new diagnostic system, the crew can get real-time feedback on each of the helicopter's components, resulting in better reaction times when an issue has appeared. With its large cargo area, the helicopter can hold larger items, including 463L pallets and high-mobility multi-purpose wheeled vehicles with a payload of 27,000 pounds. Such load can be handled externally thanks to the aircraft's triple external cargo hook system, which is particularly useful in scenarios requiring varied cargo drop-offs. With the development of global air capabilities, countless iconic aircraft have been created. Seeing helicopters like the Mi-26 Chinook or CH-53K demonstrates how they always seek to break new engineering barriers, whether by creating the largest helicopter in the world or creating unique designs that facilitate transportation operations. It is only to be expected that these barriers will continue to be broken with the arrival of new aircraft with creative solutions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.